Hey there guys, welcome to another Crossfire cast. My name's Crossfire, this is Cast, this is Crossfire Casts. Let's jump straight on into this game. There's two people in this cast that you'll actually recognize because I've actually talked about them both before. Uh, on the top side now, playing as Ostia, we have Paradox. And he is, oh, let me pop this on for you guys as well. Going up against him then is CCS, uh, CC Art SO3. Um, both these players are very skilled, very high player, uh, high level players. And you'll find that a lot of their replays are on game uh, on co2.org uh, replays section. There's tons and tons of replays about guys. Um, and the more you upload your own replays, the better it is for the whole community. Even if you think, oh, I'm really no rubbish at this game, and there's no point, no one wants to see my replays. It's, it's not right. I mean, if you're playing any level, any any game, any TP2, 3P3, 4v4, 1v1, complete beginner, amazing pro. People want to see your replays. People want to learn from your mistakes or learn from your um, strengths. So it's it's yeah, get get uh, uploading your replays, guys. Like I say, the more that's on there, the merrier, really. Anyway, let's talk about the action in this game on Minsk Pocket. And now I don't believe I casted a game on Minsk Pocket before. Uh, it's it's hailed to be the most balanced map there is. When Relic released this along uh, just before the release date. The statistics that they had were, were showing that there's about 50-50 uh, wins for both the Soviets and the Ostia. Uh, and you can see the, ma the map is rather large. It is quite big with these three main roads running through it on each of these sides. Um, and the fuel doesn't really have a natural cutoff. The fuels, both fuels are adjoined by these really far, uh, by far back um, points. So you should never really be threatened by cutoffs as much as they are just directly through brute force through the middle of through all these trees and things like that. Uh, Paradox is initial capping route then. He wants to secure this left hand side primarily and he's going to try and control the middle as well. Um, both forces, both armies are going to want to control the middle because obviously you get the VP but the fields, both fields are there so whoever can control the middle generally, you know, generally dictates the pace of the game. But if you completely did, um, if you completely neglect both of these side routes down here which has all, excuse me, all of your munitions and your strategic points then you're going to be in trouble. So uh, generally what you see is people try to tend to uh, pick two sides. They pick the middle and they pick one of the other sides to defend heavily and then the other one they'll kind of give up and they'll just go for little uh, little excursions, little sort of brief excursions to have a little look at what's going on. Barbed wire coming up from CC Arts. This is nice. This is uh, going to deny any infantry coming through until you can get a vehicle out, which won't be for a couple of minutes. So he knows he's protected this side effectively from this, at least this entrance. Um, obviously, there's flanks available to him, but there's a long way to go around to try and cap this munitions point. So we should be safe and should control a lot of this area down around here for the beginning of the match, at least, anyway. And now Paradox is going for uh, a push. Looks like he's gone right on down this left hand side. Uh, and this is a big cutoff for the um, the southern player because the southern player needs this point in order to access any of these points. And then on the flip side, then the uh, top side player needs this point to access any of the other um, side of the points. So our first initial brief engagement, we've got the two grenadier squads running up now against the uh, engineers of CC Arts, who are going to try and hide behind this log. Um, there is a flank coming from these grenadiers. I wasn't too sure if the Grandiers are going to be able to catch the fire of the MG now. The MG is a little bit far away, look, so you'd have to be right in the base to actually catch it, the fire of the MG. Uh, but the Grandiers, all three of them, are going to be able to uh, enclose around this lonely engineer squad who's thinking, oh crap, where are my mates? This sucks. I don't really care about the fuel that much. I didn't even want to be here, you know, there's a good TV program on. They just said, hey, we need you. Can you come and do some engineering stuff for us? I said, no, and they, they forced me to by raping my family. That's not a true story, and you shouldn't take that to heart. Penal Battalion out now. So this is interesting from CCR. He's revealed he's got tier 1, and he's already got a flamer upgrade for it now. Let's have a little swap over to CCR. Uh, he doesn't have the munitions then for a satchel charge, but he's able to push away these troops quite comfortably. And now with the addition of the scout car, the ability that he gets from the penal battalions is significantly increased and he can blitz around the uh, the map and really start doing some damage. Now, I recently got into a bit of debate uh, about going for penals for the flamers or whether just to stick to your engineers. Penals are obviously a lot hardier troops, there's two more of them in there as well. But this is my initial problem with it. Now, this scout car is now effectively useless, and well, it is very useless now, it's just come down. 
But had he had engineers in there, at least he'd have had the chance to be able to jump out and repair it if he's able to push him, uh, push him away with the troops. But this penal town is doing a lot of damage against that one grenadier who gets out, and Knight has gone in, but doesn't take any damage at all. Um, so just with this one penal talent alone, he's been able to take out two, well, at least force back two grenadier squads. So. Uh, a nice nice little play there from TCR, something you don't see very regularly, the Penal Battalion, so hopefully they'll start making a bit of a comeback in the meta game because their satchel charge is so fun to watch, especially when it lands and takes out infantry for four block radius. Again, I exaggerate, I'm sure it's not four blocks, but it does. it's, it's a huge explosive damage. Just bear in mind guys, bunkers don't go down to one satchel charge. So if you see a lot of bunker play, don't immediately assume they can just throw a satchel charge on it and be rid of yourself because it takes at least two. That said, uh, obviously you can just get the flamethrower and if you can micro around it and if you have scout car, obviously another scout car coming out now to support the, uh, to get these penal troops back into being uh, nice and mobile. Uh, is he got one? Yeah, he's gonna leave one guy in there to actually cap this, but you can see the sort of spread on this, on this squad is quite big. Um, that's something else to take note as well, guys. When you're throwing grenades, when you're throwing any, um, well, any grenade at all, really, just note where the actual troops are. Because obviously, there's going to be the little icon above one of the guys, as we see here, but the rest of the guys are focused on this left hand side. So if you throw a grenade, just make sure you try and catch as many people in that grenade as humanly possible to make it as cost effective as you can. So, Combat Engineers doing a good little, uh, good little capping up on the left-hand side. They're going to start taking that mission. So, if you can get both the munitions points, he's going to have um, both a nice little income for himself, but also denying his opponent. You can see, uh, you can see those Grenadiers have got the LMG. So, you can assume that he doesn't have enough um, straight away to upgrade this scout car, but he is scared of it at the moment, and uh, rightly so because. Something you'll see as well is players will start sending in their scout car before it's actually fully upgraded because you think, oh, it's only upgraded, and then as soon as it is upgraded, you know, it just, it just suddenly eats away at your scout car, which you feel very sad about. I do, anyway, when I lose my scout car. So the uh, munitions are now going, well, doing a, a bit of a rope de rope between the two guys. A very early medic station now. Well, I say very early, it's quite early. Um, Optimal timing for your medic medic upgrade in your, in your base is to be have it done by the 10 minute mark essentially because after that it starts losing its effectiveness you, you don't quite get as much out of it as you previously did uh, previously would have if you were able to preserve more of your troops early on in the game uh, but let's talk more about the game and not talk about random things so the guards are out and you can see he's actually gone for the guard motor, uh, guard motor rifles. I can't remember the actual name of it. Again, apologise. But the 120 mm mortar is effectively the uh, the commander he's gone for. 120 mm mortar is unique to this commander, and he's decided to sh highlight that by actually getting the mortar out straight away. Uh, Common engineers again are going to be capping that point, but this major cutoff now has been taken, or at least decapped, by paradox. Paradox is going to start challenging this guard rifle, but the guard rifle is upgraded and he is buttoning this vehicle now. Uh, so it should go down. The vehicle is so close to him, it's going to be difficult to worm his way out of that button. It's probably going to go down. He needs one more little boy. There it is. It does, it does go down. And these Grandiers are in some serious trouble. Uh, yeah, they do, yep, inevitably go down. But luckily enough, they didn't drop their LMG, so he's not going to be able to pick that up. Um, meanwhile, these engineers are going to go and take the victory point up here because they may as well, you know. He, there's always, uh, there's always a reason to get the VP. Um, Engineer standing by. Yeah, it's essentially, it is the game you're playing is is who can hold the VPs longer, not who can destroy more troops. So sometimes you'll lose a game really frustratingly because you've um, spent so long chasing your opponent's units and killing off all those units that you haven't looked at the VPs and realized that shit, I've got ten left, you know. Um, so just keep that in your in your eye in your, in your mind's eye when you're playing that VPs are vitally important. CCR is now going to replace this uh, this barbed wire, building barbed wire on barbed wire, making it super barbed wire. Uh, but he's in two engagements, so he's unlikely to win. Uh, Panzer Grandiers, well, actually, one Panzer Grandiers goes down early to a nice critical from the guards. I'm assuming there's going to be a bundle. Yep, here comes the bundle. Um, but unfortunately, they're very easy enough to move out of the way because they're in such close quarters. Now, again, another Panzer Grandier goes down, but there's now two guards down, so at least he's starting to break even a little bit. Um, but with backup and the arriving of his uh, Fleet of Penals, he really needs to get out of there, so he does. <sighs> These grenadiers are now going to eat the grenade unless he moves. Unless he is going to move, and he's very clumped together. So two of them just completely jibbed up there. And uh, the last one guy is probably going to try and retreat, but I don't know if he's going to make it out of there. The scout car chasing with the penalty. He really wants to try and get these Panzer Grenadiers if he can. He might. And he doesn't have enough munitions. 
but at least he can threaten that he's going for a uh, satchel charge down here. But he's gone in deep, there is no ET in here, he could very well finish off his Phantom Ranger. It's a very aggressive play, but because the scout car is relatively cheap and the pa uh, penal battalions have six members in them, he's... Squad members should be killed? Oh yeah, that would be these uh, these guys up here. Uh, so these pioneers are down, so he does wipe that squad, so now he's paid for that scout car alone. And he's able to do a lot of damage on these Panzer Grenadiers. Um, again, there's no real counter to the to the scout car. Oh god, the, pan the Panzer Grenadiers goes down. And you just gotta feel the pain for that guy because that sucks. Um, it's very difficult to protect. I mean, you'd see it a lot more in Company Heroes One, where you're. Uh <laughs> Did he? <laughs> Oh no, he did get in, he did get in, he did get in. Oh god, I thought he just completely annihilated himself. Uh, but no, he tried to do um, such a charge in the building, but buildings don't take a great amount of damage. What he's better off doing is trying to take out this uh, medic bunker here. That's a lot more frustrating. Um, because obviously it costs emissions as well. So we see a strong guard army. So it's three guards and he's got the one mortar. The mortar hasn't done anything at all. He's been sat back here for now. He hasn't had much to shoot that. Uh, what I'd like to see him now is focusing less on up here and more on the map because he can really, well there he is, he's doing it now, like his guards are moving up and really putting his stamp down on the, uh, on the map presence. So now we're in trouble, like now these Grandiers are back, they'll be able to one shot this guy very easily and the penal towns shouldn't get back in the car. Very nice, he doesn't, again he wastes another satisfaction there. <laughs> Funny enough it goes down to actually rifle made. I don't know if these penal towns are going to be able to make it out with this uh, Panzer IV chugging on after them. But we'll see. You never know. If he decides to turn his turret... Oh, okay, there's one London guy running there next to him. Doesn't look like he's going to make it out, but, you know, Forrest Gump did not... No, there you go. Goes down. I was about to say Forrest Gump did turn out to be a good movie, but uh, obviously not. So we hear that he's gone for the... He's gone... Ooh! Ah! See, this is this is the the brilliance and the uh, detrimental uh, effects of having a mortar on your team is that if you have a mortar on your team, well, they have a mortar on their team as well because this shot could. Ooh, well, one goes down. I thought that was gonna be a much bigger shot than it was, uh, but now we can see that he's now on the back foot because he's lost his penals because he's lost that uh, scout car as well, and now that there's this uh, P4 on the tank on the group on the field. The only thing he's got to do against it is these guards, but the guards aren't going to be doing, able to do enough damage on their own. If he gets all three guards troops and gets a nice button and a marked vehicle on there, possibly. There's a lot of munitions, munitions that he doesn't have right now. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what he goes for. I mean, he is building this tier 4. Uh, but he's going to start taking some shots from the P4. Well, it's nice to see the table turn around a little bit. He's now pushed his P4 into his base, and there's not much he can do about it. He does have a couple of guard squads, so he will start doing some damage. But he doesn't have any conscripts, so he can't throw any AT nades. He doesn't have a pack gun, so he can't do, any, can't do any serious damage. As soon as this building's finished, he should be able to get an S85 pretty soon. Uh, it's not going to take long for his manpower to kick in. But he is base pinned. This is a base pin. Four units going up against one unit there, and they're unable to do any real damage at all to it. And he can back out quite simply and allow all of his troops to cap up. He did have this one um, guard squad out capping up, but as you can see, he's gone. He's going to go for this paradox. Is going to go for this cutoff, which is going to deny that one munitions point up there. However, he is still connected to all these territories around here, but no fuel income. So this SU-85 has to be the daddy. He has to keep this SU-85 alive. Uh, for a very long time because he's not going to have the fuel income to replace it should it go down to that 1P4. Now, let's switch over to Paradox. So we did see, we did hear the uh, G43 rifles on his, there they are, on his Grenadiers. So they're a lovely upgrade, they do a great amount of um, infantry damage. There's a great clip, I believe it's on KOTU.org, uh, of two sniper, two two-man sniper squads going against, against one Grenadier squad with the G433. G43, and because I think it's so accurate, it was able to take down both full sniper squads before it actually died. So uh, there we are. There's some interesting notes for you guys. And because he just he just focused on going up here, he's not going to stop and shoot these guys. Something you can do, guys, uh, if you so choose, you can attack moves. So you can attack move and, and then click on a point. Um, if your troops encounter any people, they'll stop and attack it. But do bear in mind that means anything. So uh, you know your sniper will stop and in, in the field of a field of vision of an MG and try to start firing at it, so just be careful when you use it, but 
Um, it does mean that you're not going to be caught with your pants down with your engineer who's running around just capping. SU-85 in a good position here. Uh, he's nice and far back, for close enough to his base that he doesn't have to retreat, but he's still defending his fuel point. Um, obviously the shots don't do great amount of damage against infantry, but every now and then you can get a lucky strike and kill them off. But now this mortar is in a bit of danger from these panzer grenadiers because uh, obviously he's trying to mortar this guy. He's trying to mortar the troops more than anything, the actual engineers. Um, but these panzer grenadiers do chuck a bundle on him. He is going to go down. These mortars do survive with only one troop, one troop left. So most mortars, the last guy was run off. But these guys are so super awesome and love their job so much that one guy on his own will run undefended with his little wheelie bin. So, okay. Well, that is very disappointing. He didn't drop the mortar. So that's more company here as one style, where if you retreated your MG squad or your mortar squad and they died, you'd always lose your, um, you'd always lose it. So it's good to deny it for your opponent. Uh, that mechanic isn't in company here as two, but we do see a lucky non-drop there. So again, I don't know whether that was a slight glitch or if that was meant to happen, but it happened. Uh, Paradox looking in a comfortable position. Um, that base pin he had from the P4, it didn't do a huge amount because he didn't have the upgrade for his MG42. If he had that uh, mounted MG42, he would have started being able to pick away more of those troops and he would have been able to stick it out a lot longer as well. Um, but his base pin wasn't as good as the base rush he, uh, he received from CC Art. CC Art now taking the middle with his guards. Uh, so let's have a look at the commander real quick then. So this commander does give you the option to upgrade your troops with the uh, stealth, the camouflage, which is very expensive to get all of your troops done, but it can pay dividends, especially if you use it smartly, because again, it's, it's kind of underutilized. People don't expect to see it on the field. People don't um, think ahead to counter it. So if you are able to use it well, uh, to your advantage, then happy days. It unlocks the G43 Jaeger Light Infantry upgrades also gives you this nifty tactical movement. So for 40 munitions, you can move all of your troops at top speed. Um, great when there's something there's an artillery coming in, or if you need to get away from a sniper or something like that. See some, I'm hearing those shots ringing off. But I can't quite see where they are. Mm, okay, I'm meant to just to be the guards. So Panzer Grenadier is going to throw a bundle grenade. That was kind of um, evident because he was he was up there, but he was able to. Return the favor by throwing his grenade first. One punch grenade left. Get him out of there. Mm, good grenade goes off, but I mean, I, I wouldn't have risked it because because you had one guy left. Your squad is at serious risk and peril of falling to a critical. Um, so this vet one Panzer IV, uh, he's now on the wrong side of the S85's cannon. But he does have his Vet MC1, so he uses it as Blitzkrieg tactics, gives him three missions, and that's the same as that um, as this uh, tactical movement, but for one vehicle only. So he really needs to use that just to get out. You'll see people use that quite often, and also smoke grenades are great as well for evading those uh, last hits. Uh, big flank coming from these Grandiers who capped this point. So they're going to come up behind now to see if they can uh, dislodge the guards. The oh, easy oh he's actually doing quite a number on the uh, on the. Hans Grandiers there, but running over the SU-85. That's kind of rare to see because the SU-85 is so slow. Um, but he's got marked vehicle on this P4 now. He needed the immediate to get this P4 out because look at that. Damage engine critical just from the shot. Um, the guards are taking out some shots as well. So he completely overextended that. I think he, um, as soon as he's seen the SU-85 was turned around, he thought he'd going to come in to actually get it. But obviously you have to remember that the guards are very good at pinning you. And especially when you've got marked vehicle on you, you're... you're, you're you're dead in the water, essentially. So this Panzer IV, I want him to stop badly. I want him to just get repaired before he comes out to play. Um, because he needs to keep his veterancy. That's the most important thing. He needs to keep the veteran ones alive. Uh, veteran 1, should I say. A great SU-85 strike. You can see the, ra the range it has. Um, he's going to go for a little bit of a chase. But I don't think that... I think this P4 should be safe for now. Um, yeah, that, that guy's going to be able to get out of there if he keeps moving him. Uh, good bundle grenade going off on those guards. He's going to be able to recover the DP light machine gun, so it's kind of kicking the teeth because that's 60 munitions uh, for free if he chose to pick it up, which he doesn't. Uh, and there's a good reason for that because the Panzer Grenadiers are specialists, up, cl up close troops. If you've got the DP light machine gun, you're not going to be doing the same damage that you were. Um, so obviously, it's still it's very good. It does uh, a lot of infantry damage, 
but yeah, it's the same thing as if you picked up these these uh, grenadiers. These grenadiers are great at sniping away at distance, but they're not very good up close. They still still obviously very accurate up close, but it's a slow firing. You see two of them melt instantly to the flames. Needs to retreat them. He gets the rifle made off. Doesn't do a huge amount of damage. Needs to get out of there. Uh, you'll find that's kind of a common. Oh, let's have a look what's going on here. Actually, a nice cutoff going down for uh, for paradox. So he's able to deny the entire right side and completely reduce his uh, his opponent to only one point right there. So he's going to really be happy with that. He's going to get a nade off, which does take down one guy. But pretty soon he's going to have to get out of there, especially with that grenade on top of him now. He's on low health. Like I say, the crits are going to start rolling in. He's going to have to get out of there. Panzer Grenadiers are feeling like they can't really play with this big puppy. So they're um, he's going to either try and go in the guards. Or he's going to try and get out of there. But again, it's good SU-85 micro because it's such a slow-moving tank. Um, he's coming around. He's, he's just trying to push these troops so they stop firing. But if he can get any uh, any crushing, uh, any running overs as well. So you can please, there he goes in again. Now, you can't run over your own troops. That's something you sh uh, I should feel I should note. So he's turning now. He's just trying, trying. He does get one. And <laughs> two go down. Look. Like I say, it's, it's kind of rewarding when you get such a slow-moving vehicle to actually be able to run over troops. Uh, it's frustrating as an opponent, but it's rewarding as, as a player. Uh, but that said, I mean, the Panzer Grandiers are still not in bad shape. He should go out and cap with these. Um, or at least go and protect points rather than just try and duke it out with that guy, because he wasn't going to win that. Two P4s out. Now, this is the this is the um, what we needed to see. The flank that he can get on this one lone S-285 now is going to be huge. Uh, I'm going to take the fog of war off just to show you there's no other AT on the field whatsoever. It's only this S-285. And as soon as the S-285 is flanked, he has a very, very difficult time in actually being able to maneuver back into a position where he can fire on those P-4s. Let's so turn the fog of war off back off. He is being revealed by this uh, by this. Uh, fuel point, but now he's invisible once again. Panzer Grenadier is doing what they should have been doing is going to cap, but they are being chased down by the guards, so they will have to make a move out of there. They're probably going to throw a bundle grenade. I'm guessing he's going to throw it like a guess. No. Okay, maybe he's not. He's a satin cover. He's going to take some shots. Again, a grenade from either one. Okay, it's going to be a bit of a poor grenade. It does take one guy down. But you can see, that's what I was mentioning earlier on. So the majority of the troops are gathered there, and there's only two in the back. So that grenade only caught two of them rather than all four. Uh, he's decided to split up his P4s, um, which is okay, so it means he can hold more territory indefinitely. And the S85 would have to charge up against him, and he's close enough to support both his troops. But I'd like to see him uh, recognize that the, where the guards are, and when there's no guards about, just run in and nab that S85. As soon as he does that, those P4s are free reign of the entire match. And you can see the damage that these G43 rifles are doing. And they're so incredibly accurate, even though I said that, they miss quite a lot of shots. When they do hit, they do tons of damage. There you go, snaps him down. Uh, I guess he, um, I'm guessing he's just kind of fired by those guys. So now here comes the guard army. Um, what can he do against this? Well, he just has to be mindful of where the S-85 is. And obviously there's no vision on it right now, because as soon as these guys get a button off, here comes the S-85, the S-85 has now been revealed. He needs to get this guy out of here as soon as possible and get this guy in there as soon as possible. Which he is doing brilliantly. What I, yep, I was about to say, what I'd like to see him is just go over and big flank around here, because then the S-35 is stuck in here. And he has to remain in there because he's got P4s on the other side of him. Um, like I say, he just needs to be careful of a button or a marked vehicle. He doesn't want to lose any either of these P4s. As soon as he does, his chances of winning against the S-35 well, drop by more than 50%, really. Um, but at the moment, he's able to contain him in around there. He knows the S-35 is probably up around there or backing out at this moment in time. P4 is going to continue doing some damage against guards and keep that um, manpower attrition negative then for it for CCR. More guards on the field though over there. Okay, and let's have a little look at CCR. So you can see his map control wasn't great, and especially because this point was taken, he's now very uh, insecure by it, and he's he's been forced to put an OP down on there to prevent any more cheeky back caps. Not too sure why those guys retreated, that might have been a misclick. Uh, but here comes the bulk of his force to take care of the uh, invading grenadiers on his own fuel point. And he managed to get Vet 3 on those guards, uh, which is cool. Vet C3 gives them significantly increased durability. So they'll be able to start just hanging out with those P4s a lot more. They'll be able to start getting off more of their shots uh, with less chance of jibbing. 
but with sheer body bodies alone, he's able to keep this point in his control, uh, or at least not have it decapped. Uh, and now the S35 is, is uh, it's in a bit of a sticky situation, really, because like I say, against two P4s, it's very very difficult to uh, be able to keep up your micro and out position those guys. He does have plenty of fuel and uh, manpower. So what we'll see is he'll more than likely call in these two T34s. Uh, ram both of the P4s and then just continue to snap away with the S35. We'll see if that happens. We'll see. But he's got enough. He's got enough saved up, pretty much. Uh, Ten more fuel than he's got it. So Panzer and Diaz are able to soak up a ton of damage, but once again they have to get out. Uh, yeah, they have to get out. So he's throwing his troops at this fuel point, and I don't know if that's the best idea anymore because I think he's. I think. That Paradox thing, CCR is struggling more than he is. Um, like I see he's got a huge bank right here, and you can easily enough click the I win button right there. Swap on to Paradox, let's have a look at his income. So yeah, he, he's, he's struggling for fuel, but he does have three P4s out now. Which makes this uh, this upcoming battle is going to be quite tense. Let's swap on to CCR, because I don't want him to... I want to continue having a look at uh, his field of vision. See a sniper out for him now, that's not going to help him whatsoever with the incoming uh, armor fist. He's going to get a Faust off on this guy, which is huge. It means that his um, maneuverability is greatly reduced, and these P4s are going to there come. The P4s now rolling in. He does hit the I-Win button, so he's got the t 2 4s coming in. Uh, he needs to implement his guards now. He needs to get his guards, no matter how low the health they are, he needs to get his guards up. The t 4 is actually, wow, huge amount of damage. Uh, was not expecting to see that. Now the Panzer IVs are like, oh shit, maybe he didn't want to do this. He hits Veteran G2 in this S35, which is fantastic. Oh, wow. Two guys go down to one shot of the C34, and these two Panther Fours are now really thinking, well, I kind of always liked Russia. I didn't really like Germany. Don't like driving these things. But I mean, what he can do, he can very easy enough to do if he wants to, uh, is just ram, ram these vehicles and just finish them off with his S35. Uh, and he can keep these tanks in still anyway. He's still got one of his um, engineers out. But obviously, he's focusing intently on, on, these, on this engagement. So this one T-34 did take too much damage, he's, he's, um, he slowed that one down and made this one come in front and take all the damage, which is good and foresightful of him. Uh, really what he needs to do now, he needs to, because he's won that engagement, he has won that engagement, he needs to capitalize now and he needs to do that by reinforcing his troops, getting his troops out of there and start to cap up these points because the points are slipping away from him, he is triple cap, the map control is slipping away from him as well. So, the next few minutes are extremely vital for CCR in order to remain uh, in this game, really. I mean, it does look like he's in the game, but it's difficult. You see um, guards being built quite regularly by Soviet players, those in soft and uh, anti-tank and soft anti-infantry, but they are expensive to reinforce. They are 30 manpower as compared to a 20 manpower per, um, per conscript. One thing you can do is use your conscripts to reinforce your guards, but he doesn't have any conscripts out, unfortunately, so you can't do that on the cheap. Um, T-34 is going to have an alright time against this infantry. They they don't mind infantry that much. Um, you know, they can do some nice little area of effect damage uh, and start, like I say, obviously, they had that two-man uh, kill for the squad wipe earlier on. Guards are going to go straight for the BP, so he realizes that he's triple capped and doesn't like it. Uh, and he needs to move forward into this position now as well. He could possibly sneak it with a sniper, but it's not worth risking uh, a sniper just for a cap. The engineers, okay, that was smart play. I'm going to take a follow off real quick as you can see it. The uh, pioneers, excuse me, a paradox, decapped this point. And instead of staying in Kaepernick, because they knew they'd, um, they'd bump heads with the guards sooner or later, they just decapped it and then moved on. Because he wouldn't have he wouldn't have held that territory for long anyway if he had uh, stayed and chose to engage with the guards. So he very rightly moves on you east now, seeing that there's a uh, fuel cache down there, and he's gonna go he's gonna move to this point, or I would at least anyway. Yeah, there he goes across there. Let's put the fog wall back on. Sniper coming across though to uh, have words with these pioneers, saying no and no. Um, but I mean, this is, this is one of the frustrating things about this map. Uh, is all the trees, the line of sight, so they're not going to be able to uh, take out those guys. A good grenade goes off in these grenadiers, they're now down to three men with low health, but a good bundle grenade back. Ooh, it looked like he dodged that really well, but I mean, 
if those guys were in vet 3, they might have been squished. They might have been complete pulp. So the uh, snipers are able to move far enough away from the engineers without taking enough damage to shoot at them and go and cap this point back up. And you can see this bottom half of the territory now is comfortably back in the hands of CC Art, but he is still losing VPs. Um, he needs to cap those up as soon as possible, but having two vet 3 guards in the field is going to help him with his map control because those will not be um, displaced easily by one squad alone. Uh, okay, 13 kills in these grenadiers, so the G433 ri rifles are doing okay against the Soviet infantry. And now, it's, uh, now that the mid has been decapped, we are in a slight stalemate, and let's change over to Paradox. I feel I've been on CC Art's team for a little bit too long there. So, here comes the triple fist again, the triple bro fist of uh, Panzer IVs. And let's see what happens in this engagement. Again, I want to keep the fog of war on simply because it's more of a realistic impression of what the guys are going to be watching. The players should say, not just guys, I'm sure this moving thing as well. This T 34 is way overextended. Riley starts backing him out, backing him out, backing him out. Uh, is he going to get out of there? He's going to get out of there with the skin of his teeth. And this other, uh, this S85, takes down one of the. Oh, <laughs> look at the damage it does. Takes down one of the Panzer IVs, no problem. He can start micro away. Once he micro away, uh, he micro away into the tree, unfortunately. If he'd slightly better than um, micro, then this guy would have taken so much damage. Uh, that tree might survive as well. Looks like the S85. Whoa, no, the S85 is going to get hit eventually three. Now, this Panzer IV needs to get out as soon as soon as possible. There's so many Panzers that he's lost to this S85. It's one lone S85. So, what I said earlier on, that you need to keep this S85 as long as, uh, alive as long as possible. He's definitely done that which has been a huge, huge factor in him staying in, possibly winning this game. Uh, so now we see the map control is actually really in the hands of CC Art. So it's nice to sort of see this back and forth play, especially in higher levels. So this pack can probably just sit in the middle and just cap a middle point from now. Um, he's going to have to try and heal his SU-85 up as hum soon as humanly possible. Uh, Nice again, he's using this other T-34 now just to go out scouting and uh, making sure that he's got control of the points that he wants to. Sniper gets some um, nice shots off from the Panzergrandiers, well one shot off from the Panzergrandiers, he's giving them back, they're fresh, they're fresh out in the field and he doesn't want to risk losing them so he gets them out straight away. Um, but you know, it did cost him, well, 360 manpower for 45 manpower. Uh, it's not a great trade off but it's alive so he can still keep doing damage. His Panzer IV is in such disrepair that he's had to retreat uh, two of his engineers to get back there just to heal him up, ready for the next engagement, the next uh, battle. Uh, yeah, combat engineers aren't going to be doing too much against this guy, but that said, he is completely and utterly unsupported out there. So he's going to be able to take back the VP with no issues whatsoever. Um, and now, now Paradox is looking in trouble. This is the second time he's gone for the aggressive P4 rush. Um, and I just feel it, it, it's 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 cost him too much now in this game. I think uh, I, I, I don't. This is the first time seeing this match. I don't know who wins this match, um, but it just looks. Uh, if I just switch on over to CCR, it just looks like his army. Yeah, he's got a much more complete army, and obviously the two T34 is still being alive. We're going to do some awesome damage against infantry. Uh, let's have a look. So this point is going down. Panzer Grenadiers, but he's managed to get in the, the building with his guards. The guards should be able to deny this unless there's an awesome bundle grenade coming out. Uh, doesn't look like there is, for now. Um, and really, he can, he can just push straight on down to his field if he wanted right now. There's nothing else really there to, to stop him from doing that. Excuse me. I only burp when I'm on casting, obviously. <coughs> Fans of ideas are moving forward as well. They really want to try and take this point if possible or start going for the cutoffs and denying the Soviets some of their late game luxuries. Uh, double snipers. Now that spell is a good game for these Panzergrenadiers. If he can get one more kill off on them before he reveals the snipers, he'll be able to take out the entire squad, which he does. Uh, unfortunately, one of the snipers missed, I think, or went for the same guy and didn't kill him. But, I mean, he went down and said to the T-34s, and these P-4s, again, with their up gun is... I don't know, this is kind of sad now. This is very well played by CCR. He's got complete control of this map. Um, securely in... Uh, very good position at this point in the game because these snipers can be able to take out these Panzer Grenadiers very easily. Pack gun, I'm sure, is not going to last to the flank of these guards. And these Panzer Grenadiers might go down on a tree. I, I think this is probably a good game, I imagine. Um, 
pack gun is going to go down to the flank and the snipers. There we are. Good game. But a great high level game at that. Um, like I say, I featured both these players, CC Art and Paradox, on my channel previously, and both of them really come in to win. They don't they don't go in half measured. So it's it's great to see that uh, high level play, the back and forth play as well. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this cast or learned something from it, or you've just been watching my face and thinking, what a twat that guy is. Whatever you all fancy for sticking around, thank you for doing it, and I will see you on the next Crossfire cast. Take care, guys.